Good morning, Alistair. Um, I wondered if you could give some background on uh, who you are and what you do with us at Edison. Yes, so I am Edison's chief investment strategist, uh, responsible for producing uh, the outlook on the uh, global economy and uh, global uh, markets. The coronavirus situation is very fast moving. What's your take on the current situation? Well, I think, I, th I think it's passed through uh, several phases and in, and in several different domains. Um, when we look at uh, what's been happening on the ground, we see a healthcare crisis, uh, which started off in China um, in December, January, um, and has now uh, spread worldwide. Um, we've seen, uh, just maybe a little bit after that, a uh, financial market reaction, which um, possibly um, started off um, you know, with, with some degree of denial and complacency, um, um, but then morphed into a much more severe market reaction when people realised that this would be, have a very negative effect not only on China's economy but on the world economy. Um, and at this point, um, I think we've got investors um, um, trying to look through uh, towards the, um, you know, beyond the uh, what are going to be some pretty um, terrible data points um, in Q2, um, but beyond that, Q3, Q4, and beyond. Uh, to, to see what the, uh, the outlook is for equity markets, which are now trading um, close to the lows in valuation terms as they were during the um, financial crisis of 2008. How would you compare this downturn so far to the GFC? What um, are the main differences yeah, it, or similarities? Um, I, mean, I mean, there's a massive difference in terms of, its, um, in terms of the source. Um, this is a, um, <clears throat> a completely... Um, um, let me think, um, you know, there's always risk in equity markets, but this is something which has come out of nowhere. Um, whereas in the, for the great financial crisis, there were a number of market participants who were very concerned about the build-up of leverage in the system, the undercapitalization of the banking sector, and that was very much a financial uh, crisis, which um, the man on the street didn't really feel um, until um, uh, banks were not willing to extend credit. Um, <clears throat> what we've got here is, is, is something which has hit Main Street immediately um, and um, has been something which uh, one can only make contingency plans for because it's been so fast. Um, so looking, looking out um, uh, again over the next couple of quarters, um, what uh, I think is the case is that there's going to be an enormous amount of immediate fiscal support required for economies and for sections of the population uh, which, which require financial support to um, avoid um, problems just to get through the, um, the government-ordered uh, lockdowns. Now, where's the burden going to be going forward on, on the consumer? I presume we're going to get tax rate increases. I, th I, th I think it's. I think it's. A, it's. It's a little too early to speculate on 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 how the um, how the how government balance sheets will be repaired after this. But I think it's it's definitely the case that government balance sheets are going to be in a much worse position um, after this crisis because effectively they're having to backstop. Um, um, you know, large sections of society which are unable to work at the moment, uh, for, and for an indeterminate duration. I mean, I think something which investors may wish to consider is that there's a limit to how long that can go on for um, without, fiscal, without the fiscal position of many nations becoming completely unsustainable. And that may, um, in combination with better testing, better contact tracing, um, um, better treatment options and the prospect of a vaccine, actually be a factor limiting the ultimate duration of these very extreme lockdowns. I mean, could you maybe give an overview of which areas of equities have um, performed by sector and market cap in the last few weeks? Um, <clears throat> what, you, what you've, uh, you've, you've certainly got is um, a, an underperformance in the more cyclical sectors, the sectors exposed to um, uh, social activities and travel, um, <clears throat> the bank sector, um, um, as interest rates have come down and, and loan losses are expected to um, worsen um, with some modest degrees of outperformance um, amongst the more defensive sectors such as healthcare, food retailing, that kind of thing. 
Um, um, but it's not, there's, there's no real surprises in there. If you place a sudden stop on the service sector of the economy, um, um, th those are the kind of results you're going to get. You've also had a big sell-off in energy because there was a separate thing going on in the energy market in terms of Saudi Arabia trying to extract a greater market share um, just as this crisis kicked off. There's been a lot of um, discussion about what type of recovery we can expect, um, LUV and even D what, what are your own thoughts on, on this? Um, I, th I think what we need to focus on is the uh, is, is is where you, you know the timing of any peak in the infection rate, um, which then gives you the prospect for mapping out where lockdowns may be eased and there could be, as there has been in China, some return to economic normality. It's not going to be immediately business as usual. I think the, the society has been given an enormous shock um, and um, there will be um, a knock-on effect over the medium term on, in terms of demand. Um, but it's the question, the question is, can China's outbreak remain under control as, um, as, as the economy gets back to work? Um, can the European and UK lockdowns be um, relaxed, um, either in whole or in part, with better testing, contact tracing, um, a degree of herd immunity, although I understand that's a discredited concept in many circles, um, <coughs> and, and the timing of that. And say, for example, there was a... Um, uh, a 12 week period of lockdown starting a few weeks ago um, and those were being relaxed when we started to see some kind of recovery in confidence certainly um, over the course of Q2. Um, Q3, Q4 will bring um, a good amount of news in terms of the potential for a vaccine for the following um, season maybe uh, January 2021 um, but I think uh, at this stage um, it's a little bit more than a short sharp shock um, and with a, with, a, with a very rapid recovery, I think we're going to see a, um, once we see the, see the peak in infections and once investors can see that there's public health care measures which can operate, which keep the virus under control, but allow the economy to function to a, to a greater degree, then I think that's when you start to see the risk premium coming out of um, equity markets um, and credit markets. And then... Um, you know, a, a slow return in terms of a slower return in, in the, the real economy. Um, but I think at this point, it's such a shock. We'll probably be looking at the aftershocks of this out into um, Q2, Q3 of 2021. Um, and that's before we've started considering the behavioural changes which may occur as a result of this crisis. Yeah, just following on from that, how do you think society and indeed corporates could change after the pandemic? What lessons are we going to learn? Uh, I, th I think there's going to be an enormous number of service sector workers who um, will have learned to have, to have worked from home. Um, and um, for that reason, um, a, a, you know, it's a, it's a push for the digital side of the economy, both on the consumer uh, and on the business to business side. Um, and there could be a changing, a permanent shift, uh, an acceleration of the shift in terms of working patterns and, uh, and, and lifestyle. Um, that's um, definitely under the way. And that, and that goes through from people working from home to, you know, for example, in the UK, we've uh, often talked about um, telemedicine and, and, and GPs um, dishing out um, consultations over the internet. That is now happening after having been spoken about for, for almost two decades. Um, and that's unlikely, in my view, that, that kind of stuff is going to be reversed. People will be used to, more used to dealing with conducting business, conducting their personal lives uh, digitally. That's the positive side. Um, on, the, on the other side, um, until a vaccine is, is, is available for this, it does appear to be contagious. And I think a degree of social distancing will be something which is in place um, um, until a vaccine is available. Fantastic. Alistair, thank you very much for your time this morning. A pleasure. Thank you for calling in.